Review time is the home for all things theme parks. Stay up to date with our videos by subscribing and tapping the bell icon. Whether you like it or not, as a Disney fan, there's no escaping Anna, Elsa, Olaf, and everything else Frozen. Since its film debut in 2013, Disney has made over $1.2 billion from the box office alone. And that's not even taking into account the recently released sequel or the goldmine of merchandising profits. The sisters have even taken over almost every Disney theme park resort around the world, with sing-alongs, castle lightings, and even their very own ride at Epcot. But Frozen wasn't Disney's first attempt at bringing Hans Christian Andersen's classic fairy tale The Snow Queen to life. They had tried and failed a number of times since the 1940s, and in the 1970s, one of these failed proposals was a grand Mark Davis dark ride, where you would have been caught in a blizzard, met an abundance of snow-dwelling creatures, and even come face to face with the Snow Queen herself. For review time, I'm Luke, and this is the story of the Enchanted Snow Palace, the frozen ride without Elsa. Hans Christian Andersen is the man responsible for giving us such classic fairy tales as The Little Mermaid, The Emperor's New Clothes, The Ugly Duckling, and so many more. But one of his most acclaimed stories is that of The Snow Queen. First published in 1845, the story tells the tale of a cold-hearted Snow Queen who seeks to bring an eternal winter to the world. The story would stay incredibly popular in the years after its publication, before finding its first moment at Disney in the 1940s, when Walt Disney was in creative talks of bringing a Hans Christian Andersen biopic to life, where a live-action adaptation of Andersen's life would be partnered with Disney animated sequences based off some of his greatest works, including The Little Mermaid, Thumbelina, and of course, the Snow Queen. But ultimately, Disney couldn't figure out the best way to tell this story. Whilst it had proven itself as one of the greatest fairy tales, it seemingly didn't lend itself well to this new medium of film, especially after the happily ever after success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves a few years earlier. But of course, as they say, great ideas never die at Disney. In the 1970s, there would be another chance to bring the Snow Queen story to life, but this time in a completely different medium than film. Mark Davis is known as one of Disney's most influential designers. Being the so-called ladies' man of animation, he would find himself as the lead animator for characters such as Snow White, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and so many more. Though arguably, his best and most memorable work was at WED Enterprises, now known as Imagineering. Many rides and scenes that are now thought of as iconic Disney moments and attractions are thanks to the incredibly creative mind of Mark Davis. Chances are, if there's a great visual gag or moment in a ride designed in the first 20 or so years of Disneyland, Mark Davis probably designed it. From the pointed visual gags of the Jungle Cruise, to the swashbuckling moments of Pirates of the Caribbean, and even the haunted happenings of the Haunted Mansion. Davis had an incredible skill of infusing his scenes with detail and humor, with his concept art always being beautifully brought to life in the final product. In the 1970s, Mark Davis would design two attractions that would have been seen as his swan songs. For the Magic Kingdom, he dreamt up the Western River Expedition. Rather than the park simply getting Pirates of the Caribbean, it would have gotten a brand new ride through the tales of cowboys and Indians, a ride that sadly never saw the light of day. At the same time, however, Davis was dreaming up a completely different ride for Disneyland, one that would help you escape the blazing SoCal sun into a frozen world. If the enchanted Snow Palace attraction was ultimately built, it would have been impossible to miss. As you walked through Fantasyland, you would instantly notice a massive glacier melting away in the heat. 
This glacier would have been to the left of It's a Small World, in the space currently occupied by the Fantasyland Theatre. Inside, you would have boarded a boat floating down a melting river and have seen Mark Davis's interpretation of the Snow Queen. The ride would have been filled with all of the creative character designs Davis was known for. There would have been an orchestra of penguins, shout out to the Muppet Vision fans, known as the South Pole Pops, putting their own spin on Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker Suite. Music would have been an integral part of the experience, with an original soundtrack for the ride created by Buddy Baker, composer of the Haunted Mansion soundtrack, amongst many other things. Other musical misfits would have included the Three Snowballs trio, as well as the Snowball Men, who we can work out the mechanics of by studying the incredibly detailed concept art. Elsewhere in the ride, there were to be creatures enjoying the fun that a snow day can bring. Some would be twirling on an ice skating platform, others would have been snow sliding, some gracefully, and some not so much. However, the finale of the ride would be even grander. After escaping some dangerous looking frost giants swatting away at the fairies from Fantasia, you would have entered the Grand Ice Castle home to the Snow Queen herself. After conjuring up a blizzard of real snow which your boat would have been caught in, you got swept away, bringing you safely to the end of the ride. Of course, much like the biopic plans in the 1940s, the Enchanted Snow Palace never made it past the planning stages. Whilst the ride wouldn't have been as exciting as Pirates of the Caribbean or the Haunted Mansion, it would have been a nice, calm family ride, and the perfect way to cool down for a while. Sadly though, Wed in the 1970s was a little lost, after the passing of their fearless leader Walt Disney. Plans for rides such as the Western River Expedition were shelved, with more thrilling attractions such as Big Thunder Mountain Railroad taking their place. It seemed that the fairy tale of the Snow Queen was cursed for Disney, but that wouldn't stop them from tackling it again in the 1990s. Disney animation in the 90s was going from strength to strength, in the middle of the Disney Renaissance, and in the midst of that would be Disney's third attempt at bringing the Snow Queen to life, around 50 years after their first failed attempt. The project was given to the incredibly talented animator Glenn Keane, who even after around 10 years of work, still couldn't figure out how to tell the story in the medium of film, and moved on to work on the upcoming Rapunzel adaptation in 2002. It would be another six years until Disney's next attempt at the story, and this one would be their first success, on a rather grand scale. Production began on the new Anna and the Snow Queen film, and after a few years of development hell, once again centered around the character of the Snow Queen, it was decided to reinvent the character from a blue-skinned, one-dimensional villain into Anna's older sister, one who is struggling to accept her own fate. They had finally figured out a way to tell the story, and while it may have had very little to do with the Hans Christian Andersen original tale, it gave the story a fresh new twist that finally made it appeal to modern audiences. And now with billions of dollars sitting in the Disney kitty thanks to Frozen, they seem to have made the correct decision. Today, Frozen is an inescapable phenomenon, and with the success of the sequel, it doesn't look to stop anytime soon. In 2014, it was announced that Frozen would receive its own attraction, a boat ride set to replace Maelstrom in the Norway Pavilion at Epcot. Whilst the ride does share a few elements with the forgotten Enchanted Snow Palace attraction, such as the boat ride system, and even the Snow Queen herself conjuring up some icy winds to move your vehicle along, Frozen Ever After owes a lot more to Disney's desperate desire for a Frozen attraction than it does to Mark Davis. In a few years, it will be almost impossible to avoid Frozen at all of the Disney resorts around the world, with Hong Kong, 
Paris and Tokyo, all currently constructing their own frozen lands and rides. Whilst it will be great for Frozen fans to experience the magic of those two sisters in so many places, I for one wish we could have instead visited the Enchanted Snow Palace and all of the incredible Mark Davis characters featured within. For review time, I'm Luke. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing.